Hello everyone, welcome to Power Electronics. In this session, I will be discussing on the complementary commutation technique. The complementary commutation is also called as class C commutation or parallel capacitor commutation. A complementary commutation is used to transfer current between two loads and such an arrangement is shown in figure 1. In this commutation technique, the firing of one thyristor commutates the other one. When thyristor T1 is fired, the load with resistance R1 is connected to the supply voltage Vs and at the same time, the capacitor C is charged to the supply voltage Vs through the other resistor R2. When thyristor T2 is fired, the capacitor is then placed across the thyristor T1 and the load with resistance R2 is connected to the supply voltage Vs. Since the thyristor T1 is connected to the capacitor C with its anode connected to the negative plate and the cathode connected to the positive plate of the capacitor, thyristor T1 is reverse biased and is turned off because of the impulse commutation. Once the thyristor T1 is turned off, the capacitor voltage is reversed to a value of minus Vs through resistance or load resistance R1, T2 and supply. Therefore, the polarities of the capacitor plates will be reversed. If the thyristor T1 is now fired, the capacitor voltage will fall negatively across the anode to cathode terminals of thyristor T2 and it is turned off once again in the same way the thyristor T1 had turned off. In this way, the cycle is simply repeated. Normally, the two thyristors conduct with equal time intervals and we have the waveforms for the voltages and currents for the e for the pattern that is R1 equals to R2 equals to some load value of R. Now since each thyristor is switched off due to impulse commutation, this type of commutation is also known as complementary impulse commutation. Now we finally come to the discussion of the waveforms. The first waveform we have been shown here is the current waveform across the capacitor. Then we have the voltage waveform across the capacitor itself. Since it is a voltage commutation, it is the voltage across the capacitor waveform that is very important to us. Now, let us assume that initially the thyristor T1 was open and when the thyristor T1 is triggered at some time T here, you can see the capacitor will start to charge through the alternating load resistance and it will reach a maximum value of which is equal to plus Vs and it will stay there as long as that thyristor is on. Now, when I want to turn off the main thyristor which is T1, I have to trigger the secondary thyristor. You see, till then the secondary thyristor or T2 was open circuited and at this exact instant, when I turn on the secondary thyristor T2, the capacitor voltage, as I already have discussed, will fall negatively across the thyristor T1 and this will commutate the thyristor T1. Now, one of the most important conditions for the thyristor T1 to turn off is the pulse width of the negative voltage applied or the time duration over which the capacitor voltage will fall negatively across the thyristor T1 has to be greater than the overall turn off time or the circuit turn off time of the thyristor. If this time duration is not long enough, that is, if this is lesser than the turn off time of the circuit, then the thyristor may never go back into a properly off state condition. Continuing, now when the thyristor T1 has, commute, has been commutated, the voltage across the thyristor T1 is equal to that of the supply. And in this duration, as we can see, the thyristor T2 is conducting and therefore, ideally, the voltage across the thyristor is 0. Now, if I want to turn off thyristor T2 now, I have to turn on or trigger thyristor T1. And when this happens, the voltage across the capacitor, which has reversed itself when thyristor T2 was triggered, will now fall negatively across thyristor T2. And therefore, the thyristor T2 provided, once again, 
the time duration between the application of negative voltage across T2 greater than the circuit turn off time, the thyristor T2 will be commutated. Now, let us find the expression for the circuit turn off time for the thyristors represented by TQ. Now, from the waveforms of voltages across the thyristor T1 as well as across the capacitor, it is obvious that the circuit turn off time TQ is, please look at this, it is the time taken by the capacitor voltage to reach 0 volts from minus Vs volts. So, if this is what is minus Vs, from here the time taken by the capacitor to reach back to 0 volts is what is the, the circuit turn off time. And the capacitor time constant is being RC and the final voltage reached by the capacitor is plus Vs volts. So, coming back to the equation here, the equation for capacitor voltage Vc of t can be derived as follows, obviously by referring to the capacitor waveforms. Vc of t is equals to final value of the capacitor voltage plus initial minus final value of the capacitor voltage whole multiplied by e to the power of minus t by tau, where tau is the RC time constant, where Vi is given as the capacitor initial voltage, Vf is the capacitor final voltage and tau as I said is the time constant. From the waveform for the capacitor voltage, we see that, let us go back, from the capacitor voltage waveform, we see that the time t at which the thyristor is completely commutated is TQ, right? So, from here to here is what actually is TQ. Also, at T is equals to TQ, the voltage across the capacitor, if you look at this, is equal to 0. Further, the value for tau when thyristor T1 is to be commutated is R1 into C. The final value of the capacitor voltage when thyristor T1 is to be commutated is plus Vs. And the initial value of the thyristor uh, capacitor voltage is minus Vs. So, this is what is the assumption and conditions taken from. Substituting these values, that is, at time t is equals to 0, Vc of t is 0, Vf is Vs, that is final voltage and initial voltage is minus Vs. So, substituting these values into equation 1, 0 equals Vs plus initial value is minus Vs minus of Final value is again plus Vs into e to the power of minus e power, sorry, e to the power of minus Tq whole divided by R1 into C. Now, simplifying this, this is Vs plus of minus 2 Vs into e power minus Tq by R1 into C. Now, taking Vs to the LHS, we get Vs equals to 2 Vs into e power minus Tq by R1 into C. Let us cancel Vs on both sides and take this one 2 into the denominator of LHS which will give us 1 by 2 which is equal to 0 0.5 is equal to e power retained as it is. Taking natural logarithms on both sides we get ln of 0.5 equals e gets cancelled minus Tq by R1 into C and rewriting this expression for Tq we get 0 0.693 into R1 into C. It has to be noted that this time constant should be greater than the thyristor or the device turn off time of thyristor T1. Very similarly, when you try to commutate thyristor T2, you will obtain the expression for TQ as 0 0.693 into R2 into C. Usually, as we already have stated, we keep for complementary commutation R1 equals R2 equals to R. Therefore, the overall or the simple equation for the circuit turn off time is given by 0 0.693 into R into C. Right. So, that is about the discussion on complementary commutation technique.